You're a future monarch. You've had a chance over more than 30 years now to observe our current monarch, the Queen. What, from the very particular perspective that you have as a future king, what, what has impressed you most about her? I think um, the Queen's duty and her service, her tolerance, her uh, commitment to, to others, I think that's all been incredibly important to me and it's been a, a real sort of guiding example of um, just what a, sort of a good monarch can be. And uh, it's been incredibly insightful for, for me growing up, watching her, uh, her leadership in that role. So what, what in particular would you say you've learnt from her, from observing her? I think um, just the qualities that are um, essential uh, for somebody in a, in a leadership role. I think it's important to, to grow into a, um, a particular role with the right characteristics and the right qualities. And I think she's uh, exemplified that in everything she's done. And has she made a point of guiding, in a sense, instructing you as the future king uh, about, as it were, the, the art of monarchy? Has she, has she sort of taken you aside uh, on many occasions and, and done that? She, she hasn't, no. She, she's more of a soft, um, soft influencing, uh, modest kind of instruction. So it's, uh, or, or guidance rather than instruction. She, I don't think she believes too heavily in instruction. She believes in finding your own path, but with very good examples and guidance around you to support you. And I think that's what she's, she's found to be the most um, effective for herself, is the fact that she has been in, uh, able to, over the, uh, since 1952, the many years, understand how best, to, how best she can make an effect with her, her role. And I think it's all about finding your way with the right people, the right support, close family around you to guide you. And I think she sees that more important than uh, instructing. And taking a very long-term view of things. I think, yeah, I think there's an element of, um, you know, there is a long-term view to look at. It's not uh, short-term uh, as much uh, as in politics. It, it is more seeing a vision and having a, a role. And it's about representing timeless values, I think is very important. It's, um, you've got to mix the traditional with the, the modern, and I think um, that's something she's done extremely well. You've referred already to her sense of duty, to the conspicuous devotion to duty that she's displayed over these decades. To what extent would you say that you share that degree of devotion to royal duty? I think um, royal duty is extremely important. I think it's, um, it's part, of the, um, part of the fabric of, of what uh, the royal family and uh, any future monarch has. And it's something that um, is very important. And I take duty very seriously. Um, I take my responsibilities very seriously. But it's, it's about finding your own way at the right time. And if you're not careful, duty can um, sort of weigh you down an awful lot at a very early age and I think you've got to develop into the duty role. Um, it's something that uh, I take very seriously but with my family and with my, uh, my role of uh, air ambulance for instance, um, I think there's a number of things I've got and my fingers in many pies at the moment that I want to keep an eye on and that will change as, as life goes on and I'll take on more. You know why I'm asking you this, mm. um, it's because there is an impression in some quarters that you are in some way a slightly reluctant royal. You will have seen, or I'm sure people will have told you about some of the stories, some of the headlines in recent weeks and months, work shy William, I think some of them have said. Yes. Now, there's also been criticism of the Duchess of similar uh, vein. How do you respond to that? Do you, do you regard that criticism, that impression as being a fair one? I, to be honest, I'm going to get plenty of criticism over my lifetime and it's, uh, it's something that I don't um, completely ignore, but it's not something I take you know, completely to heart. I'm concentrating very much on my, um, my role as a father. I'm a new father and I, I take my, my duties and my responsibilities to my family very seriously and I want to bring my children up um, as good people um, with um, you know, the idea of service and duty to others, very important. But if I can't give my time to my children as well, then uh, I worry about their future. Plus, the serving the community with the air ambulance, I, I, I'm very, uh, uh, I find the air ambulance role very important to me. It's um, serving the community, 
working alongside extremely good professionals uh, in the medical profession. Um, and then there's my royal responsibilities, which I still keep going, and which when the Queen decides that she's, uh, she's uh, going to hand down more responsibilities, I'll be the first person to accept them. But clearly from what you're saying, this, this division of your life into these three components, the, the royal duty, uh, air ambulance pilot, and your family, clearly that's very important to you. Now I wonder whether that division into these three parts, the fact that then you are not fully engaged at the moment in royal responsibilities, does that have the full agreement and endorsement of your grandmother, your father? Absolutely. My grandmother and my father um, are 150% supportive behind uh, everything I'm doing, um, and Harry and uh, Catherine. They, uh, they very much understand, you know, whilst my grandmother is still extremely active at the helm of the, uh, the royal family as the monarch, my father is incredibly busy with his charitable activities and, and other responsibilities. There's, uh, there's the time now and the space to explore other means of um, doing a worthwhile job. And for me, the Air Ambulance is an, is an incredible, important part. It's not going to last forever, but uh, I think it's important. So I think you're saying that they, having uh, experienced royal duty from such a young age, the, the Queen from 25, your father from even younger, of course, that they recognise the importance for you to be partially exempted from that degree of royal duty at a very young age? No, I don't think it's that. I think it's more that um, they understand there's the flexibility right now whilst, whilst I'm still relatively young and they're still very, very active. Um, there's, a, there's an order of succession and I'm, uh, I'm at the bottom at the moment. So there is the, the time and space in the future to, um, to, to take on more and develop more. Yeah, and clearly uh, as the Queen becomes 19, and we mustn't forget as your grandfather approaches the age of 95, clearly a greater share of the royal burden will fall on you, and as that happens, you will grasp it willingly. Absolutely willingly, and as that time comes, I'll be the first person to put my hand up and take it on. But like I said, my grandfather is so active as well, and he's unwilling to, to slow down. My grandmother is very much at the helm, and my father is extremely busy. So um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of very hard-working members of the family already in place, and I look up to that, and I see they do a fantastic job. So you would expect to continue to be an air ambulance pilot for the foreseeable future, for, for some years? I, I have a contract, and when my contract runs out, that will probably be a time um, that I finish. I'd like to just explore a little, what kind of king will William V be? Now, we've become used to the present queen being scrupulously, pretty scrupulously detached from all issues. Your father, on the other hand, as Prince of Wales, of course, is very much involved in all sorts of issues and has indicated that he would wish to convene when he becomes king, make heartfelt interventions, I think is the phrase that's been used. What's your sense of what it is acceptable for a constitutional monarch to do? How involved can a constitutional monarch be in current issues? It's a very good question, Nick, and it's, um, it's something that um, occupies a lot of my thinking space as to how, how on earth um, you would develop into something modern uh, in today's world. And I take a lot of, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a unique position and actually a very privileged position to be able to, uh, to see some of this now, which is that I've got my grandmother who takes a very, um, uh, if you like, um, more of a passive role in, 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 in um, how she believes her role should be. She's, she's above politics, she's very much away from it all and, and keeps, keeps his eye on it. And I've got my father who, who minds an awful lot about many of the causes he's involved in and, and really digs down into his charitable areas as much as he can. Um, so I have an, uh, an equal sort of idea as to how my role could, could benefit everybody in the future. Um, it's, not, it's not something that I've, you know, right now it's at the top of my priority list to think about. I think about it um, just quietly when I get a few minutes or when something pops up and it reminds you to think about it. But I think in the Queen I have an, ex an extraordinary example of somebody who's done an enormous amount of good um, and um, she's probably the, the best role model I could have in front of me. I mean it does sound as though you do spend quite a lot of time thinking about it. Uh, each monarch brings uh, some of their own personality to the role and I sense that you're saying that when the time comes, you will hope to be a, a rather more modern monarch and, and bring something of that sense to, to the role. Well, I think the royal family has to modernise and develop as it goes along, and it has to stay relevant. And that's the challenge for me, is how do I make the royal family relevant in the next 20 years' time? And 
you know, it could be 40 years time, it could be 60 years time, I have no idea when that's going to be and I certainly don't lie awake um, waiting or hoping for it because it sadly means that my, my family have moved on and I don't want that. But you must be confident that you can do that, that you can make and keep the monarchy relevant within the United Kingdom. Absolutely, I, I hope that's something that I can do. It's, um, it's something that I've, I think I'm very important about and the Queen is a fantastic role model to, uh, to lead that as she has done for the last um, 90 years. Finally, um, I don't know if you recall at what age you were when you first got an inkling that you weren't part of a normal family. Um, I wonder whether George has in any sense started to pick up on the fact that he's not part of an ordinary family or whether you and your wife are starting to prepare the way for him realising who he is and what one day he will become. Well, as far as we're concerned, within our sort of family unit, we are a normal family. You know, I love my children the same way any father does and I hope George loves me the same way any son does to his father. So we are very normal in that sense. Um, and, you know, George, there'll be a time and a place to, to bring George up and, you know, understand you know, how he fits in, in the world. Um, but right now, it's just a uh, case of keeping a secure, stable environment around him and, um, you know, showing him as much love as I can as a father. Thank you.